Hello, this is Mr. Mac. This is the concept video for exponential functions. Now let's start with this. f of x is equal to b to the x. Now let's let b be greater than 1 is an exponential function. Now this is kind of new. You probably haven't seen this before. And the reason it's new is now it is the exponent that is the unknown. In other words, f of 2 is b to the second. f of 3 is b to the third. So it's not the base that changes now. It's the exponent. So let's take a look at a simple example. f of x is equal to 2 to the x. Now, if we were to make a table of x and f of x, we know that when x is 1, f of 1 would be 2 to the 1 or 2. When f is 2, uh, f of 2 would be 2 to the 2 or 4. 3, we get 2 to the 3rd or 8. Uh, 4, we get 2 to the 4th or 16. Now, if x were 0, then f of 0 would be 2 to the 0, and anything raised to the 0 power is 1. If x were negative 1, any, uh, we'd get 2 to the negative 1, which is really 1 half. And if x were negative 2, we would get 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. So these are the uh, x's and y's that would be matched with this function. Now, if you look at the function itself, um, 1, 2, about here, 2, 4, maybe here. 3, 8 would be here. 4, 16 is probably off the scale already. 0, 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative 2, 1 fourth. Now, we could connect these dots with a smooth curve, and we get a function that looks something like this. Now, if, uh, and, and so notice what we've got is we've got to the right here, as x gets larger and larger, y gets larger and larger, and it gets large very rapidly. Now, as x goes to the left, as x gets more negative, like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so forth, the fractions are getting closer and closer to 0. So the, y, the, the x axis on the negative side here is asymptoting, if there can be such a, a verb as to asymptote. But in, in other words, the function has an asymptote of the x-axis to the left. It kind of flattens out and gets closer and closer to the x-axis. Actually, it will never touch it, because if you take any number and raise it to a negative power, like 2 to the negative 10, that's 1 over 2 to the 10th, which is about 1 over 1,000. And it does get very tiny, but it always stays positive, so it always stays above the x-axis. So now, uh, we call this function uh, with, uh, with uh, a, a base 2, in other words, a base greater than 1, we call this exponential growth. Because what happens is as x gets larger and larger, the output of the function gets larger and larger. You've probably heard somebody in the past say, and this thing is growing exponentially. What they mean by that is as it is given time, the growth rapidly increases. Okay, now, um, the model for exponential growth that we want you to know is the amount that you have of something at time t is equal to uh, some initial amount, a, times 1 plus r raised to the t, where r is the growth percentage, and 1 plus r is referred to as the growth rate. Let's give an example of this. If we have a, a Petri dish with bacteria in it, and we say that the number of bacteria is growing by 25% an hour, then if there are 10 bacteria in at time, time 
zero if there are 10 bacteria, then at time, what did we say? At one hour, there would be 10 plus 25% of 10. That would be 12 and a half bacteria, if you can have such a thing. And then at two hours, there would be 12 and a half plus 25% of 12 and a half. And uh, oh, gosh, I, I don't know what that is. Let's just figure it out. Uh, uh, 12.5 plus 12.5 times uh, 12.5 plus 12.5 times 0.25. That's 15.625. So 15.625. And it would continue on and on like that. Now, see, since the growth rate is 25% per hour, you could, and there's 10 at time zero, you could use this formula right here and say the amount at time t, t being in hours, is going to be 10 times 1 plus 0.25 raised to the t. Now, um, Watch this. If we go back to the calculator, um, we can say 10 times 1 plus 0.25 raised to the x. We, we don't have t in our calculator, so we have to use x. Now, if I were to ask the table or the graph to give me a table, notice at time zero, there's 10 bacteria. At time one hour, there's 12 and a half. At time two hours, there's 15.625. At time three hours, there's 19.531. At time four hours, there's 24.414, and so on like that. Now, that may not be all that significant, but, no, significant, but notice in 12 hours, you're up to 145 and a half. And if you go to a full day of growth at this particular rate. You've got 2,117. If you go to two days, up to 48 hours, notice there's 448,415 and a half bacteria. So that's what we mean when we say something grows exponentially. Uh, the exponential function um, is y is equal to b to the x and the exponential growth, B, is going to be greater than 1. And if you have a growth percentage, then 1 plus that growth percentage will give you your growth rate. And you uh, just put the initial initial amount in here for the coefficient A. And then your growth rate raised to the T, where T is in whatever time units you have. And you can get the amount at the times that you want. And notice, uh, although probably with time it doesn't make much sense to talk about negative 3 or negative 5 hours or something like that, the growth uh, function uh, goes to 0 to the left. Now, if we have an exponential function, f of x is equal to b to the x, but now we let b be somewhere between 0 and 1, Something very different happens. Um, let's let f. Let's let b. Let's, as an example, let's let f of x be one third. One third to the x. Now, x f of x. If I let x be zero, anything to the zero is one, of course. If x is one, I get one third. If x is two, one third squared is one ninth. If x is 3, 1 third cubed is 1 27th. So notice as we go to the right, uh, as x gets larger and larger, our numbers are getting closer and closer to 0. Let's try to the left, negative 1. Well, 1 third to the negative 1 is equal to 3 to the 1, which is equal to 3. Uh, if we do negative 2, we get 9. Negative 3, we get 27. So if we were to look at this graph, notice 0, 1 again, 1, 1 third, 
2 1 9th, 3 1 27th, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 9, and negative 3 would be off the graph already. Now notice here what we've got is as x increases, the function is heading more towards a constant value. It's, it's getting closer and closer to zero here. Here, and we call this exponential decay. Now, you probably are aware of examples of exponential decay, but you may not be know that you're thinking, know what to think about them at the moment. Uh, let's give a couple of examples. If your dad goes out and buys you a car and says, here's a car, and you even if you keep it in good shape, two years from now, it's not worth as much as it is now. And, uh, well, unless it's some special car that becomes a classic, but basically, usually the value of a car over time goes down. 10 years from now, it'll be worth less than it is two years from now. But if you maintain the car, the car, and, and the car keeps running, then it's not ever really gonna be worth nothing, but after a while, it's not gonna be worth a whole lot. That's a decay situation. Now, you all are probably aware of radioactive material and the concept of half-life. Half -life. If you have, say, 16 grams of uranium, and uranium has a half-life of T years, then T years from now, that 16 grams of uranium will only be 8 grams. Half-life is uh, basically says, in, the, in a half-life, the amount that you have will be halved. So say t years from now if you started right now with 16 grams you'd have eight grams another t years after that or in other words two t years after that after the initial 16 grams you'd only have four grams half of a half and then if you waited another t years you'd have half of a half of a half or one eighth of 16 or two grams and it would keep on going like that now question would you ever have no uranium well, no, but after a while, you'd have a very small amount of it. Those are examples of exponential decay. Now, notice uh, exponential decay functions um, asymptote to the right, and they grow to the left. And the actual uh, function, a of t, the amount you have at time t is going to be equal to the original amount you have, a, times 1 minus r raised to the t. Now, r is the um, decay percentage. In other words, how much, what percent is leaving each time period. And 1 minus r is going to be the decay rate. So if you're given a decay percentage, you can take 1 minus that percentage to get the decay rate and then put it in with the initial amount for A, and you can use this function to get um, exponential decay. Now, one more thing we do need to talk about in exponential functions. Now, in both exponential growth and exponential decay, notice that X, the exponent can be any real number we can uh, you know the exponent can get bigger and bigger and bigger or it can get smaller and smaller and smaller it can be zero it can be negative so when they ask you for the domain of any exponential function it will be all real numbers now in the um Solution videos, uh, there's some shifts. I mean, they shift the graph up, down, left, and right, and so forth, and you do need to watch those. But basically notice, if you've got an exponential function that asymptotes to the x-axis, if it's growing upward, then the range will be y is greater than 0. Notice it'll never be equal to 0, but it'll be greater than 0. Now, if the uh, uh, parent function is multiplied, say, by a negative 1 so that your exponential function goes down, then y will be less than 0 will be your range. It's still, the domain will be all real numbers. But y will, uh, y will be the values that are on one side or the other of the asymptote. So it's 
kind of important for you each time to find where the asymptote is when it's shifted around and then look and see if it's going up from the asymptote or down from the asymptote and that will enable you to tell what the range is. Now, that in conjunction with the solution videos should give you a pretty good um, understanding of graphing exponential functions. And we're done.